Welcome to my darkroom. My name is Chris Woodhouse and I'd like to show you how to use the various RH Designs products for metering, timing and process control. This particular short video and the subsequent sequence is going to show you about the analyzer. The analyzer is a f-stop meter timer and it's been around for about 10 years and over that period of time we've constantly refined it as a result of customer feedback and our own personal experiences. It's unique amongst timers in that it has an f-stop timing base, has a remote spot meter and has very intelligent modes of doing burning and exposures and showing what type of print exposure you're going to get before you actually make a print using a patented grayscale. So first of all let's take a look at the unit itself. It's a steel box with three mains sockets at the back, one mains inlet, an on off switch with a fuse and two mains outlets which go to the safe light and to the um, enlarger. At the front of the unit are two sockets, one is for an optional foot switch and the other is to plug in the remote metering probe. On the front is a four digit display, eight big buttons and the grayscale running along the top. Let's look at it in more detail. The metering probe consists of a small sensor and a simple measuring button and a plug that plugs into the front of the box until it presses home. Switching the analyzer on brings up the display and when it first comes up it tells you the software version. It does a quick check of all the display digits and then shows you the paper channel before finally showing you the grade and time. So let's go through the front panel and the basic operation of the buttons in more detail. The analyzer consists of a four character display with a grayscale running along the top and normally the left hand digit represents the paper grade that's being used and the right hand side represents the exposure time. The eight buttons from left to right consist of a print button that print and pauses the uh, print exposure, a focus button that allows you to turn the focus light on and off, and then two buttons that alter the contrast setting of the analyzer, allowing it to work out the exposure for different paper contrast settings, and then two exposure buttons which increase and decrease time in fractions of an f-stop. Next to those are two special purpose buttons. One is a general clear exit and cancel button and the other is a button that allows us to either do calibration settings or switch the paper channel that is in use. Briefly, the paper channels individually store the calibrations for up to eight papers and you can recall these at a press of a button. So let's go through these in more detail. In more detail, the print button starts a print. Pressing it once starts the print exposure. You can see the time counting down and the letter P on the left hand side reminds you that it's actually printing. At this point in time the enlarger would be on. When it reaches the end of the count it returns back to grade and time. If during the print I am to press the print button a second time it will pause the print, turn off the light, allow you to do things like dodging and burning cards, moving them around or whatever, and pressing it again will continue the exposure until the end. Pressing any other button, like the focus button I've just pressed, cancels the print and reverts it back to the standard grade and time that was on the display at the beginning. The next button is the focus button. Pressing it once, toggles the focus light on and will turn the safe light off. Pressing it a second time turns the safe light back on again and the enlarger off. You can only take meter readings when the safe light is actually off and the, and the light is on so this prevents you taking silly readings when there's no actual light around. Next two buttons increase the grade and decrease the grade. So reducing the grade and making it softer press this button or hold it down and it counts through half grade steps 
down to uh, zero, 00 or a little zero as I use here and all the way up to grade 5 which is the hardest grade you can get and this corresponds to the Ilford or the Kodak filter settings that you can buy off the shelf. If I am at a strange grade setting and I want to return back to a standard grade setting pressing the clear button a second time will bring me back to standard grade and time as a quick way of resetting the starting point. The next two buttons are to do with exposure. Increasing the time, the time jumps up in fractions of an f-stop and pressing downwards scrolls back down. And you can go down to about a second or so and you can go up to about 140 seconds or so. Depends on the enlarger rating uh, because we don't want the bulbs to get too hot. Pressing both buttons together reminds you what increment is being used for the f-stop timing. In this case, a sixth of a stop. And whilst it's showing this display, I can go up or down in fractions of a stop. So I can reduce it to a twelfth of a stop so that the time goes up in twelfths, or I can make it coarser and go in sixths, quarters, thirds, or halves. To store that and come out, I press the cancel button and now when I go up in time it goes up in much larger jumps in half stop steps. You will have noticed that the times themselves don't actually go up and down um, in perfect f-stop increments. So for instance with half stop steps if I press that twice it takes me to something that's slightly more than twice the old time. And the reason for it is that the analyzer has built-in reciprocity failure. All photographic materials slightly lose their sensitivity with reduced intensity of light. And this has a built-in compensation that allows you to get better quality prints when you change the enlarger, um, enlargement setting. Okay, moving on to the last two buttons. Um, at any point in time, this button will cancel out of a mode or it will clear it to the standard time and grade and it will also exit either calibration modes or user setting modes that will come on to in a little while. This last button in the corner has two main functions. One is to act as a method of changing the paper channel so that you can bring up a different set of calibrations. And so pressing it once reminds me what paper channel I'm on. I'm on channel 2 and then again using the up and down buttons I can cycle through the other paper channels and pressing the cancel button then stores that. So if I press that button again it now shows I'm on paper channel 8. So I shall return it to 2, gone too far, and then press the cancel button. It has another use which we'll go into later. A long press of this button takes you into the calibration modes. But, uh, there is a hidden use for the focus button. Pressing and holding the focus button brings up the user display. And the user display is a method of basically setting custom preferences. And you can press this button repeatedly and it cycles through a number of different options. So this option here is the light saver. So this, the idea of this is that um, it stops the enlarger being left switched on for long periods of time. This is a display brightness. This is the beep. This is the test strip mode. This is the safe light mode. This is the default step size when the unit powers on. And this is the default paper channel when the unit powers on. And this is a programmable delay that occurs between pressing the print button and the actual uh, enlarger turning on. And it cycles around to the beginning. So in more detail, the first one allows me to toggle between save on and save off. I'm going to have save off. And then pressing the user button again, display brightness, I can make it very dim or bright. In darkroom conditions the, uh, the dim setting is quite readable, perhaps not in this lighting. The next setting is the beep and what I can do is 
turn the beep on, which I prefer. And this has two things. It, um, it beeps at the beginning and end of uh, a print sequence and ticks every second, so it's quite handy for calculating um, any dodging that you want. The next mode is the test strip mode, and I can do separate test strips where each ind individual test strip is the full exposure, or incremental. I prefer incremental because it's a lot quicker. And next is the safe light mode. Okay. This determines whether the light is on during the exposure. Um, there's a default that says it's on all the time, and there's another setting which is automatic, so that it intelligently decides whether the safe light should be on or off, either during measurements or during the exposure being made. The next is the default step size, so I can increase the time by going up and down the buttons. So that's the step size as before. And then the paper channel. I can alter the paper channel here as well. That's the one it powers up at. And again, I'm using the up and down buttons in each case to change the state. And then the delay. There's either delay on or delay off. And this is for stabilized transformers. They need a little bit of extra time to turn on. And so what this does is it adds in an extra bit of time to allow for the the transformer to turn on and make your exposures consistent. My transformer turns on immediately, so I'm setting this to off. And that's the end of the user mode. To exit the user mode, I press the cancel button in the corner.